In this video, we're going to be just going through a quick outline of all the new features of Pro Tools 2020.11. This update is a pretty massive update, and like I said before, a lot of these features have been asked for for years, and they've finally been implemented, the first of which is really hard to miss. You've installed the new update, you open Pro Tools for the first time, and bam, this is what you see. This is dark mode. It seems kind of silly, but Pro Tools has never had a dark mode before, and it looks pretty slick. Basically, what they've done is taken all this null space, all this negative space, and just made it, well, darker. They've also taken all the colors and made them a darker, easier on the eye shade of the color, so you can look at it for long hours or in low light and not have to worry about eye fatigue nearly as much. So, dark mode is a win. People have been asking for it and it's here. And you can see that it's dark mode over in the mixer window as well, which looks nice, easy on the eye. Now you may notice that I have Melodyne running and that is to symbolize that Pro Tools now comes with Melodyne Essentials. And this is a really welcome addition, definitely cool to have. Unfortunately, I already own Melodyne Studio. So I can't show you Melodyne Essentials without completely wiping that off of my machine, but it's gonna look a lot like this. The tool set is gonna be a little smaller. You won't have the note editor, things like that, but ultimately it looks very similar. I'd also highly recommend going to the Celimony.com website if you have any questions about Melodyne. They have an excellent website with lots of information. As you can see, Melodyne Essential is the least expensive Melodyne, and then they have upgrades all the way up to Melodyne Studio, which is pretty expensive in comparison. But if you look at the features menu, and I've always thought this is a little interesting, most of the essential features are in Melodyne Essential, which I assume that's why they call it Melodyne Essential. And I've always found it interesting that, yes, these features that come in the more expensive versions absolutely amazing and yes they're one of a kind but a lot of the power that is melodyne is in these essential features it's normally 99 dollars, and now it's included in pro tools after pro tools 2020.11 melodyne essentials is included which is absolutely fantastic and to make it even more cool and more rewarding we're starting to get some very basic ara functionality in that we can use the Melodyne algorithms to turn audio into MIDI. And it's very easy to do. There's three different ways to do it. We're gonna talk about it more in its own video, but just like that, we've turned audio into MIDI. And as long as you know which algorithm to use in different situations, it does a pretty fantastic job. Just a little bit of editing the MIDI data is usually necessary, but it does do great right off the bat. Another cool new feature is the space clips function. So if you have a bunch of clips and you want to space them out a little bit, it's way easier to do that now with using the space clips function. You can tell it how far you want to space it out, and you can even tell it if you want to go bars and beats, minutes and seconds, etc. And when you hit apply, it's going to make that change, which can save you an insane amount of time when working with lots of clips. So that's very helpful. Another cool thing is they finally dropped the term bounce to disc, and now we have bounce mix. But it's more than just the name change. As you can see, the menu itself has changed quite a bit as well. And there's some under the hood performance enhancements, such as the offline bounce speeds are now faster. And we have a new setting in our playback engine menu. If you go in, you'll notice there's an optimized performance at low buffer sizes, and this feature should be able to greatly reduce your amount of latency while you're tracking, especially when you're tracking virtual instruments, but even when you're tracking with microphones. There's also been a few upgrades that are for ultimate users only, but don't worry if you're not an ultimate user, if you don't mix for Dolby Atmos, you're probably not going to miss any of these features. For instance, you can now have up to 512 master faders. So I've already got one, so I'm gonna add 511 more master faders, stereo, click create, and wow, 512 master faders. And you're probably wondering, why would anyone need that many? 
And you're not wrong in asking that because it seems absurd, unless, of course, you're mixing for Dolby Atmos, in which case it's nice to have the processing at the end of the output stage for each individual output. And now it's possible to insert limiters and such on 512 master faders when you're mixing for Dolby Atmos. So, kind of cool. Most people won't use it, but the people who do have been asking for this for a long time. Another new Ultimate Only feature for Dolby Atmos mixers, now you can import or export ADM BWF files. Before now this had to be done in real time, but now it can be done as an offline export very easily within Pro Tools and saving Dolby Atmos mixers a lot of time. Unfortunately, I don't have any Dolby Atmos renderer such as Dolby Atmos Production Suite, Mastering Suite, or Dolby RMU, so I can't show you this step by step, but it does look fairly straightforward. You'll just need to set your playback engine to the Dolby Audio Bridge, and then you're going to need to go into your I.O. and make sure all the beds and objects are mapped correctly. And then all you need to do is go to Bounce Mix and set your file type as Wave Dolby Atmos ADB BWF file. Again, since I don't have a Dolby Atmos renderer, unfortunately I can't set this up on my machine right now, but it should look something like this giving you the option to set the file type to a WAVE Dolby Atmos ADM BWF file, and then confirming your beds and objects are indeed mapped correctly. And then all you need to do is set your file destination and hit bounce. And that's way easier than it was before. So even though I can't show you this process 100%, just know that you can export these files and you can import them the same way you would import an OMF or an AAF file by hitting import session data. So if you do Dolby Atmos, by all means, go to Avid's website and look up more on how to do this. But for right now, just know they have implemented these features and they should make your life a lot easier. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna be talking more about dark mode and how you can revert to classic mode if you want to, because maybe you just don't like dark mode. So I'll see you then.